evaluator to give us his objectives and time. Laura? Brett is uh, delivering a speech under the humorous speech workbook. His objectives are to deliver a speech with the primary purpose of entertaining the audience. The speech should have a theme or a subject and humor about that subject. However, the point is not the speech's main purpose. The humor should come from the exaggeration of events. Use body language and voice to enhance and dramatize the speech. Tied to seven minutes. Thank you, Laura. Tied to seven. Got it. The world of IT can be a crazy and scary place especially for those like me who are technically challenged or not so technically inclined. <coughs> Brett has been a part of this forbidding world for more than 15 years. <laughs> Is he crazy? We can decide that after his speech. Or has he made, or has this world made him that way? <laughs> we can decide. Please help me welcome. Brett Patterson, Life and IT, Life and IT, Brett Patterson. For those of you that didn't know it, I am multilingual. Last count, I think I am fluent in about four languages, another five or six, I'm passable. How did I learn all these different languages? Well, it's a long, boring story that I'm not gonna get into, but Kismet landed me in the world of information technology, IT. What are these languages I speak? Java, C Sharp, Visual Basic, T SQL, JavaScript, HTML, XML, PHP, a little bit of Perl, and even a little C and C, as well as several different dialects of these different languages. <laughs> Now these languages are immensely helpful for a lot of you, and you don't even know it. It's because I speak these languages, I'm able to do things for people that, that help them out. They make their jobs easier, makes them happy. And let's look at some of these languages. Okay, this is Russian. So this is the Cyrillic alphabet. Not one of the languages, but let's look at one of the languages I speak. Hey, they're not too different, are they? <laughs> this is a Perl script, if you, ever, if you wanted to know. And because I know these languages, I get asked to do things in various applications. Those applications you use like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, like I'm using today. All of this has these languages behind them. And I get to spend days writing this stuff. Like a masterful story by Jimmy's favorite author, Thoreau, author Thoreau, I write stories that look like this. Sometimes what I get asked to do is real easy. And I can do something like this. Just hack up some code and voila, it's done. <laughs> And if you notice, that's basically what it looks like. <laughs> Other times, I get asked to do something like, hey, can you give me a button so I can send an email? Absolutely, I can do that. That's an easy one, right? It is to the uninitiated. But let's take a moment and look behind the scenes. Here's the code. Oh, it's not up there. Let's move this over. <clears throat> Let's look at the code to send an email. <laughs> that 
chance for one little button. <coughs> one little button. And like other languages, when people aren't communicating well with each other, they misinterpret them. You have to learn who you're communicating with, how they communicate, and the different ways those idioms are used in the language. Otherwise, you can wind up in a situation like this. Well, here's what the customer explained. Here's how the project leader understood it. The analyst designed it. The programmer wrote it. The consultant described it. How it was documented. Because <laughs> that requires those other languages. What operations actually installed? <laughs> of course, this is how you build a customer, for sure. How it was supported. <laughs> and that's what the customer really wanted. But when you're not speaking the same language, you can misinterpret those things. But that's okay. Much like books available to help you learn a language, this is the essentials of Russian grammar. Well, for those of us who speak my languages, we have books too. There's one. You can see uh, the language differences. <laughs> this is for the spoken and written word of the Russian language. That's code. But that's okay, because again, when you're talking with people, sometimes you just need to have that quick little pocket reference. So this is my basic Japanese conversation dictionary where I can quickly look up the word I'm looking for and when I'm done, quickly put it back in my pocket. Helps me out anytime I need to speak with somebody in Japanese. That's all right, those of us in IT, we have our own little pocket consultant books too. <laughs> when I need help, I pull out my pocket consultant here. It doesn't fit back in my pocket when I'm done very well. But it allows me quick access to get the information I need so that I can speak the right language. Did I go? Because the last thing we want, of course, is this scenario. We want this. So speak the right language. Now that you understand a little bit about how all these different languages work and how you interact with these different languages, and how I've come to learn these different languages, I can assure you that none of you now will ever wind up in this. <laughs> Mr. Toaster. <laughs>